Hello everyone, welcome to Advanced English Conversation 2. This is the orientation video for the 2021 school year. Before we begin, I just want to go over this lecture's content. First, there will be a short teacher introduction, followed by a course introduction, and then I'll end with some notes about how to use the Google Classroom. Let me begin with an introduction for myself. So my name is Irene Cao. You may refer to me as Miss Irene. Unlike Miss Dominica, whom a lot of you had in your first year, I do not allow my students to call me by my first name. The reason why I maintain this level of formality is because many teachers in my home country of America do not allow students to call them just by their first name. And you can actually get in trouble if you call a teacher by their first name, depending on how formal the school or the environment is. So just to make sure that none of you ever run into trouble with American teachers or teachers from another country in which English is a primary language, please call me Miss Irene and not just by my first name. Also, you might notice that I'm asking you to refer to me by my first name plus Miss. Well, that's because if you called me by my last name plus my formal title, it would be Miss Cow. Yes, the animal that goes moo. So please don't call me Miss Cow. I will not respond to that. As I mentioned, I am American. I'm actually from the East Coast, right around here. Now, my family is from an area right outside of Washington, D.C., which many of you have heard about because it is the capital of America, and that's also where the president is located. Don't ask me if I've ever met him. The answer is no. All right, now that you know a little bit about me, your instructor, I want to go ahead and talk about the course. The first thing I want to talk about is my teaching philosophy, which is language is a muscle. That means I believe that you can improve your English communication skills through practical usage. So you're never going to get better at communicating in any language if you don't use it, right? So in my course, I hope to exercise your English language muscles so that they get stronger and when you speak in English, you feel more comfortable and you speak more efficiently. Let's go over the materials you will need for my class. You will first need a textbook, which I will explain in the next slide. You will need this textbook in every class unless I tell you otherwise. You will also need, in every single class, a thin lined A4 size notebook. Now this notebook is extremely important and I'll talk about that in another slide. You will also need one A4 size folder. This is for handouts, particularly those pertaining to your speeches. You will also need pens, either green or blue, and pencils. Also on certain days that are designated for research, you are allowed to have a laptop or another research device to connect to the internet so that you can do research for your speeches. You may not have them in every single class, only on the days where I say they are allowed. Let me talk about the textbook now. So the textbook is in the same series that you used in the first grade. It's called World English 3. You can find this book in the stores at the front of the school, so you can buy them there if you are looking for them right now. You will primarily be using the textbook for its themes and for its lesson goals. We don't base everything we learn in class on the textbook, and the reason why is because I like to use my own custom materials, but we will use the unit themes and the lesson goals. Regarding the notebook that you'll use in my class, please pay attention. Do not buy a thick notebook. Please, please, please buy a thin notebook. The reason why I am setting strict requirements for thinner notebooks this year is because I have been carrying the notebooks for many years up and down the stairs of day one and it's starting to cost 
me some pain in my back. So I'm asking all the students to please help me by buying thinner notebooks starting from this year. The notebooks also be must be A4 sized, which means that you should be able to put a regular piece of printer paper inside. The reason why is because sometimes when we have worksheets, I need you to either tape or staple them into the notebook. If you're asking how thin the notebook should be, I actually got one at a local stationery store and I put it into GIF format so you can see how thin I would like your notebook to be. Now let's go over some basic class rules and the kind of behavior I expect from my students. So my class is your only English immersion class, which means it should be done 100% in English. That means no speaking in Korean. I am extremely strict about this rule, not only because I don't like it when students disrespect me by speaking in Korean, but I think that when you speak in Korean, what's worse is that you are disrespectful to the other students who are expecting to learn in an English only environment. So please make things easier for me and better for the other students in your class by speaking only in English. I want to talk now about sleeping in class. First of all, sleeping in class is not allowed. There's no way that you can learn English by sleeping, right? Also, do not put your head down in class. I know life at day one is very tiring, but this is also not a great posture to have when you're trying to do a group activity with your teammates. There are some exceptions for the putting your head down in class rule. Sometimes my students are sick. Sometimes they have a serious condition. What you can do is you can just talk to me and say, Miss Irene, I'm not feeling very well today. May I put my head down in class? You know what? I'm not a witch and I'm very sympathetic to my students, especially because I know life at day one can be very hard. So as long as you give me warning beforehand, I can give you permission to put your head down in class if you're not feeling well. If you are given permission to put your head down in class, you are still responsible for the work that you miss. So please be aware of that. Now I'm going to talk about tardiness and absences. Please do not be late for class. I check attendance at the beginning of every class because I'm responsible for the whereabouts of all of my students. Have all your materials, especially the notebook and the textbook, on your desk by the time the bell rings. I do not like it when students are scrambling to get their textbooks and notebooks in their lockers right as the bell is ringing. Those should be ready because you should know your schedule and have everything ready for my class so we can begin on time. If you are absent or tardy for a legitimate reason, you are expected to have a note. So sometimes there are things like certain types of club responsibilities, or maybe you are doing counseling with another teacher and you're going to be late or you're going to be absent for a portion of the class. I would like a note explaining your absence, especially if it is signed by another teacher. If you go to the clinic, you also need a note. The nurse at the clinic should know what that means. And even if it's written in Korean, I will keep it for my records to make sure that you are not outside of school or you didn't go to Lotte World or somewhere ridiculous when you're supposed to be inside the clinic. Okay, so I wanna talk about absences because I have a specific policy. If you are absent for class, you will miss the group activity in the offline class and oftentimes you can't make it up because <laughs> you need to be in a team and you need to have my materials from my PowerPoint in order to do that. So if you have a legitimate absence and you cannot make up the work for that day because it was a team activity or a group activity, just see me. You have to see me 
two weeks after your legitimate absence because in those two weeks if you see me I will give you a special post-it and you can put that post-it in your notebook for the notebook check so that I know that you didn't do those activities because you had a legitimate reason. Let's talk about the thing that everyone is worried about, which is the assessment. The assessment method is very similar to the method that Ms. Dominica had in the first semester. So there will be exams. There will be one midterm, which is primarily a listening exam, and there will be fill in the blank questions at the end like you had last year. There will also be a final exam that it consists of reading passages and multiple choice questions about those reading passages. In the classroom for our offline class, I expect you to participate. So there's a participation grade. There's also a notebook check. You will have a speech packet and there will be one presentation each semester. The change that I am implementing this year is that rather than having two notebook checks per semester, there will only be one notebook check. The reason why I'm doing this is last year, the two notebook check system was very difficult to implement because the schedule changed so much that having two separate due dates was a burden on both me and the students. So we're going to only have one notebook check per, per semester now. Let's look at the participation grade. This is often the easiest grade to get 100% on in my class because it involves things like having all the materials you need for my class. Attendance, so not being late or often absent for my class. Having a good attitude, so no sleeping or putting your head down without permission. Active involvement in class. This makes me so happy when I see a lot of students being active in my class. English engagement, so no Korean. To show you how strict I am about this rule, you will be given one verbal warning if I catch you speaking in Korean. And though I am not fluent in Korean, I am very fluent in hearing when Korean is spoken. So I will catch you if you are speaking in Korean. So after that one verbal warning, I start taking minus 0.1 deductions. And if I have students with continuous problems, I have a nice chat with your homeroom teacher about your class behavior. So please, speak in English. Let's go over what you need to do to do well on the notebook check. First of all, I want to say that I use the notebook way more than Miss Dominica. In fact, I was quite jealous of Miss Dominica last year because she didn't use the notebook as much, so her notebook grading was much, much, much faster than mine. <laughs> but you should know up front that you will be using your notebook quite often. Notebooks will be collected once a semester, as I have mentioned. However, it is highly advised that you continue to take notes after the notebook check. So I will not be grading your notebook again after the notebook check, but that doesn't mean you should just stop taking notes. Before the notebook check, there will always be a list of what you need for the check posted beforehand in Google Classroom. And finally, you don't need to have content from this orientation video in your notebook. So if you're taking notes and thinking that it's being graded for a future notebook check, it won't be. You can relax. Like last year, you will have to do a speech packet. You will have one speech packet per semester. They consist of 10 worksheets and they're turned in all at once, uh, once a semester. The worksheets are meant to help you prepare for the speeches that you have once a semester. The worksheets are mostly fill in the blank and matching to make sure that you understand how to do the speech correctly. Some worksheets involve a little research, so you will have to use the internet while filling out the worksheets. Worksheets will be corrected before they are turned in. We will either correct them in class or I will post corrections on online classes. 
for the missing corrections. So some of my students got in trouble for this last year because they did all the worksheets last minute. Uh, if you do not correct your worksheets, that equals minus points. You should not be getting minus points for corrections because all the right answers will be given to you. You will be doing two speeches in my class. So in the spring, you will be doing a literature speech. So you'll be reciting a famous scene from a famous work of literature. You will not be deciding which scene or which work of literature it is. I will be deciding it for you. In the fall, you will have the speech, which I consider more difficult because it involves critical writing. It is the persuasive speech. Yes, it is the MMS. So you will be having MMS again in the fall. My MMS is a little more difficult than Miss Dominica's MMS. I will be talking to you about the topics later and how to prepare for this speech. Now, while this speech is quite, it's a significant amount of work, a lot of my students are really proud of their MMS at the end of the year, and they always want the topic of their MMS described in detail on the transcript because they actually find their work very useful and something very good to have for their college transcript. Quizzes. Last year, I did not give out a single quiz to any of my students, and that's because all 10 of my classes were extremely well behaved. I expect the same for this year. Quizzes are a last resort for me. If the entire class is fooling off and not paying attention or doing the proper work, I decide that everyone in that class will take a quiz and it will become part of your assessment. So you can avoid my quizzes by being a good student in class and I won't have to grade them and you won't have to take them. We're going to move on to the final section, which is about the Google Classroom. I want to talk about what to expect from my online classes. So if we are meeting offline, as in we're meeting in the classroom, the structure of my class is very different from the online classes, of course. The majority of my offline, offline class, as you can see right here, involves student activity. So that means that I am not lecturing at you the majority of the time. You are talking with each other. And that's great because, as I mentioned, language is a muscle and you should be exercising that muscle as much as you can in my offline class. Of course, I cannot have the same class structure for my online classes because you are not able to work together in teams or as partners. So for my online classes, I primarily lecture. It's about 50% lecture and then about 30% video content. What I mean by video content is that I draw from different videos from across the internet and I include things like clips from documentaries, news sources, sitcoms and TV shows into my online uh, classes. And that's because I want to expose you to a variety of spoken English. There will be student activity and primarily that student activity is response based, which means that you watch the lecture and you write down responses based on questions in that lecture. But it's not easy to have a conversation in an online class, right? Regarding the online classes, you will need your notebook for each one of my online classes. The reason why is because I will be introducing essential vocabulary that you will need for the exams in my online class. Also, you need a notebook in order to write down answers for response activities. So I'll ask a question in my lecture about something that you have an opinion on or about some personal information about you, and you will write down the answer in your notebook, and often it will be part of the notebook check. Now, I am planning for a hybrid schedule this year. A hybrid schedule is half online and half offline. I don't know the exact details of the schedule yet because Corona, <laughs> I don't know how Corona will play out. So I need to prepare for both offline and online classes as you should probably prepare for as well. If 
you have online classes one week and offline classes the next week, you need to be prepared because the activities for the responses I want you to write in the online class, for example, I'll ask something about, what do you think about this thing that you just saw in the video in the online class? Next week in our offline class, I will pick a random assortment of students and ask them about the response they wrote down. So please be prepared for that. Don't do all my online class activities at once right before the notebook check because you will be caught off guard when we have offline classes. Because I will be asking you about online classes and checking in to make sure that you've been progressing. Mistakes. So I put a lot of effort into preparing online classes, but occasionally I make mistakes. Please tell me about those mistakes. Email me quickly so I can fix them and re-export my video so that not every single class will have to witness my mistakes. I rely on my students to be a second pair of eyes because I know you guys are very sharp and you can catch things that maybe I miss. All right, so before coming to your first offline class, what should you have ready? First of all, you need to have the materials I mentioned in this lecture. So have your textbook and have your thin notebook, please. Second of all, I would really appreciate it if all my students brought positive energy into the classroom. I will bring positive energy into my classroom because I want you guys to have a much better year than 2020, which was the year that I'm hoping that we all forget very soon. This brings us to the end of our lecture. Do you have any questions? You can bring your questions to the first day of class if we have offline class first, or if you want to ask me questions immediately, you can reach me through my day one email. So that's it for my orientation video. I very much look forward to seeing every single one of you, hopefully very soon. Bye.